that wraps up a 76 mile week. Welcome back to Viz Vibe. I'm Vivian Camille, and today we are talking about Mission Race Ready Phase 3, aka 100K training. Are you excited? Because I am pumped. When it comes to 100K training, pretty much your long runs are gonna get longer and you cannot fake your nutrition. I just wanna walk y'all through what my highest mileage week looks like, the reality of a 76 mile week when it comes to time and commitment, and also just a couple of mindset things that I do to get me through. I like to start the week off with a rest day. That way I remember that rest is the most important thing in this training. I like to start with a, just a small little mindset shift. I like to run from a place of rest rather than rest from all of my running at the end of the week. That vibe just seems to be exhaustion and fatigue. I don't like that, I don't like that. I'm finally off the plane, it's 2 a.m. So that's all for tonight, that's all the energy I have. Um, it's late. I'll see y'all tomorrow. It is Tuesday and I'm going for the first run of my week. Today is gonna be a six mile run and tomorrow I'll have another six mile run. We'll keep the mileage low at the beginning of the week so that at the end of the week we can pound that out. Cha 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 cha. I've, I've been training for a long time to build my base. Oh, partly because I started from ground zero but if you are putting in the time, you're going to be spending a lot of time running. And before you embark on the commitment of 100K, I think it's a good thing to think about why you want to run 100K, who you're going to become as you run, or like the person you want to be as you train, and what makes it fun, and what's going to make it more fun, and what's going to get you out the door. Uh, because if if you're doing it just to get the buckle or whatever like I'm not sure that's gonna be a big enough reason to get you out the door make sure it's something you want to do because the last thing you want is to spend all this time on something that doesn't make you come alive for me the greatest part of signing up for 100k is not the race itself it's really the person I become in the process leading up to it um, it's the discipline that I develop, the people that I meet, and the joy of getting to run outside. Um, it really motivates me to get out on the trails. Today, the beautiful outdoors takes us to Norfolk. It's maybe gonna rain. We'll see. Six miles, let's go. There's not a whole lot of uh, running area without like stoplights in Norfolk, so I finished up at the treadmill. Another day, another run. Today I've got six miles and I'm gonna try and fit in like 15 to 30 minutes of probably core and arms. I try to do this about two times a week, usually on my lower mileage days or my easier days so I'll probably do it again on Friday when I do 22 really really slow. The benefit of this is the fact that when you get to mile 40 and you've been on your legs for eight plus hours depending on your pace your legs are gonna be shot the arms are gonna be propelling you and if you can have a strong core and strong arms that's gonna make your cardio that you've worked hard on and the endurance that you've worked hard on with your long runs is gonna make that go farther especially if you've got a technical race if you're running 76 miles a week you've got your cardio covered so Stick with the weights, go heavier, do less reps, and focus on those muscles and burning them out. Yeah! Six 
smiles in the books. Ooh, ooh. I like that. What's up, folks? Today I am in Albuquerque and we are doing speed work. I love speed work. I consider hill repeats as speed work as well as tempo runs, fart licks, and just getting um, some turnover in, basically. Um, hill repeats are certainly different from speed work, but if you're going uphill, it's kind of like sneaky speed work. Just getting warmed up. Once I'm about a mile or two in, start the speed work. I've got eight miles today. Sometimes I'm a bit more structured with my speed work and I'll actually go to the track. And I usually end up doing mile repeats there. So it just depends on what I'm feeling and what's gonna bring joy to my run. in the books I ended up doing five minutes at like 85% effort and then three minutes rest this turnover is important um, it just activates some different muscles compared to a long steady run and it also strengthens your heart and your lungs as well speed work is not necessary but every bit counts I did a 18 mile run at like 740 call that a tempo run way back when and that is all going to compound and lead into the race um, in January. Okay, I'll see y'all tomorrow. It's cold and I don't have gloves. Okay. I guess I'm ready. <laughs> sure that that was a recovery run slow pace I think we did maybe 12 minute miles or slower so um oh yeah 13 so we just we were just chilling out um not trying to push the pace not trying to do anything crazy uh Erin had just she's just finished a marathon so we were all in the same boat good recovery run see you tomorrow Today is Saturday. We've got a 22 mile run to get in. Important thing to note for me is to take this run as slow as I can. I've already done my speed work this week. Tomorrow will be a little bit quicker of a run just because I have to get to the airport. Um, so that's just functional. <laughs> All right, I know it's not great to split up a long run, but my stomach today decided to get angry. So we're driving to the track so that I can be at the bathroom at any second. The stomach is not gonna win this one. Nope, nope, not today. So Sundays I usually meal prep and it takes like anywhere from an hour to two hours depending on how much I prep. I think the main thing with food prepping is just making sure that you have food on hand so that when you get off the trail, you have food and you're not forced to just snack all day. I like to have some meal stuff kind of prepped and ready to go. My sweet potatoes. Those back-to-back -back long runs, I really, really wanted to get in because for me and my confidence stepping onto the Bandera 100K start line, I just wanted some long distance under my belt. Now, remember that this is wrapping up the phase three 
100K training, but this 100K training video is just a glimpse of what 100K training was for me. For me, I also trained for the 50K and I also trained before that. Now, some people can get away with a lot fewer miles and other people are gonna go into the 80s and the 100s as they train each week. My suggestion here for anyone who's interested in 100K is run what makes you feel confident to get on the line. If you think that's a 40 mile run, great. Enter into a race that's 30 to 40 miles, enter into a 50 miler so that you can get that time on your feet if that's what you think you need. I did the Franklin Mountains. It was a very rigorous race. It was 35 miles. That kind of helped me get a feel for six hours on my feet and what that's gonna feel like over some rocky terrain. So that wraps up this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I post a new video every week. Happy trails, happy trails, and good luck. I hope to see some of you at Bandera. of 100k training. I'm back out in Albuquerque. Now, as you can see, um, when we were doing, like when we were building a base for our, the ultra marathon, 50k and 100k, I was stopping quite a bit to eat and to drink and really just taking um, a chill time to run my long runs. I just wanted to say that now I'm out here, I'm running up all the hills, I'm a lot stronger now, and I'm not stopping as much because all this is to say that if you build that base properly, then do not fret. Do not get ahead of yourself. You will have the endurance and you won't be burnt out by the time you make it to the 100K. But when you're building your base, be confident that as time goes on, you're gonna improve.